than usual with hip hop. And our story showing how hip hop is used by some people you wouldn't have expected in some places you might not expect it. You know, uh, me personally, uh, I don't underestimate anyone. A cute little old lady could stab you. Now let's look at the first tale. It's from VC Square producer Ben Holman, and it's about a gringo rapper who moves to a slum in Brazil. Eu não fiz a decisão de ir para o Brasil para morar e é... só aconteceu. Chuca tinha muitas bandas e coisas boas mesmo. Pierret foi a nossa banda de, de rock pesado. DJ Maus planejado para fazer para, para Disney, o Tecno Clown. <risos> Reggae Flake Hunter. Eu sempre lutei muito, muito com música. Já quando eu cheguei no Brasil, eu cheguei também para fazer música. Essa bateria do funk, quando eu vi lá na rádio favela, é doido demais. Que bateria é essa? Então, eu não sabia se eu devo detestar essa música ou gostar. Nada mais é do que a música do, do gueto do Rio de Janeiro. Ai, que delícia! O funk ele tem uma química, um swing. O nosso funk não agrada a todo mundo. Eu sei disso. The later the party, the more weapons there are, and the more high and the more doped up the people get. Poderia ser também MC alemão. Eu pensei, vou representar os gringos inteiros. Com um gringo no pé, não tem nada a ver. Na gíria alemão significa um inimigo. Eu não sei, talvez um dia eu consigo. European or American, if you go to Rio and to the favela, you, you don't have a clue what, what's going on. Que alemão significa primeira exposição. Eu canto na favela. Com sangue bom. Aí eu levei o gringo lá na Muzema pra gente fazer o nosso primeiro show. Foi péssimo. Sendo que o pessoal não, não, não tá acostumado com o gringo cantar funk no Brasil. Oh, esse gringo tá de boa, tá de, tá de abuso esse gringo. Lá na central, se tu pagar mal. Mais, pô, de novo. Ah, ah, ele falou no microfone que o show foi ruim, ele falou. Ah. Isso foi muito ruim, né? Ah. Porra. Para morar dentro da comunidade, com risco de tiroteio, entendeu? E com tantas situações difíceis, aí sim que eu, que, eu, que eu quero vir. Isso sim é ser carioca. Todos os moradores, em poucas semanas que ele veio morar aqui, ele já conseguiu contagiar os moradores, os vizinhos, todo mundo é fã dele aqui. Demorou. É, sai bem? É. Eu, eu tenho problemas financeiramente por causa disso eu moro na favela. A comunidade é muito legal e para mim foi também a chance de conhecer o Rio de Verdade, na minha opinião. Se você luta no funk, a tua hora vai chegar pra mostrar se você é bom ou não. Plantar no caldeirão, só quem conhece, quem vem de raiz. 
O gringo com o coração dele, ele conseguiu chegar pro caldeirão. A gente não se vende, a gente se dá por amor. Eu não preciso aqui 100% das pessoas atrás de mim, eu nem preciso ser aqui 100% integrado. Mas do jeito que vi agora a Europa, eu tô feliz que eu fui para o Brasil. Apesar de viver mais na pobreza, mas eu tô acreditando que vai mudar. E se não, então vou trabalhar um dia no Mercedes, onde que na fábrica. Que sabe, cara. Very unusual indeed. We're going to take a small break and then we're going to see Sisters of the Underground. This week, we are back. Now, this next one comes to you from uh, the vlog blog Team Jaded at teamjaded.com. Now, Team Jaded is a vlog blog dedicated to DIY culture, information, and innovation. All right? So now let's see some hip hop ladies. Hip-hop, where it started and where it is today are just completely different. It was a culture of expression and community and a way to bring things out in each other. So we decided to kind of throw monthly events and come together to provide a stage for women who didn't get the chance to get out there and get on the mic, get on the table, get on the dance floor, um, showcase their artwork and things like that. is an all-female collective networking support system for women involved in the hip-hop culture. Almost everybody is part of SOCU. Hip-hop is like our lives. It's like what we've chosen to sort of dedicate ourselves to. I personally got involved um, through dancing. I had a friend and he had gone to the spot dance mission and that's where a few of the girls were practicing some of like the first OG members of Sisters of Underground, they were practicing there and I just kind of met up with them and started hanging out. Cricket was a really shy, quiet, kind of quirky girl who just loved dancing. It's amazing to see um, her transformation. She is the program director for our Deaf Ed. Deaf Ed is Sisters of Underground's hip hop education program. We teach a lot of anywhere from elementary to high school students, mostly from low-income families, um, and really hip-hop is the only way to reach them. She's doing an amazing job. She's um, probably running around like a crazy woman like I used to. It's a lot, a lot of work. Hey, Jen, I'll meet you there. Did you go in the front? This is how I get in my car. No, it's okay. <laughs> And sometimes that goes off. I'm sorry. It's really my car, I swear. I moved here from Wisconsin to be around people who are more artistic and open-minded. Forget all the magazine ads that you see. It's not all about being beautiful and being the skinniest girl in the world. It's really that we are just amazing women and we have so much talent and sometimes it takes another woman to reach out to another girl to bring that out. We're just getting here now. You guys know about Sisters of the Underground, right? We're coming up with a new chapter called Kid Sisters. A lot of times you guys may see just girls in, on the videos, and not all the girls in the videos are like us. Our mission is to use the culture of hip-hop to teach what we see as the hip-hop values of acceptance, nonviolence, creative self-expression, physical fitness. What I wanted to share with you guys today is some dancing. And what I like to do, I like to pop and I like to break. There you go. It's not like you're walking. Toe to heel. Lean. Pull it in. Scoop it in. Push it up. Jump back. Okay, we're gonna do this. Jump back on a left foot or right foot comes up. Pull his. I 
they, they don't care. They're just going to while out and try everything that you propose to them. Anything you want to teach them, they're going to try it out. They're down. <laughs> She's just taken a huge leadership role, and I mean, straight up, she has also taken a huge leap in her b-girling. Now, we are heading to South Space for the two-man platoon battle, which I'm gonna take everybody out. I'm gonna be walking, I'm gonna see, you know, we're just gonna rough somebody up, <laughs> out, pull her hair out. She on my turf. There's been a lot of b-boy jams at South Space, so not only do I get in free, it's my home turf, because I practice there, so I kinda got some pros to that. I'm just gonna, Cruise in, change my clothes into my battle gear, and um, get started. A stronger female presence is definitely needed in hip hop and I think we have a lot of the tools, the will, and the ability to just get out there and make this stuff happen. This is a normal day for me. I mean, you could do hip hop as a living. You know, I'm, I'm a hip hop education program director and I also battle and I do performances. If it's something you want to do, if it's something you're into, you can do it too. Start anything where you're at because there needs to be more females who are really down for the cause and who are just ill rocking it and rocking it with their skill level not just using that sex appeal of being females. This is of the underground. We're here and um, we're doing it big and we're doing it well. <laughs> Tantalizing oral experience are up in just a moment. Delicious. Dominique likes black delicious. Is it true? I do, I do, I do. Well, we're not gonna see black delicious right now, but we are gonna see a group that has a vouch for black delicious, and that's good enough. That's like seeing black delicious. How many times did I say black delicious? We're in San Francisco at Bottom of the Hill, about to see Honeycutt. Incredibly pumped. They're completely awesome. You can just tell that they're having fun. That shit is hella funky. What you can expect when you see Honeycutt live is instant ejaculation. The crowd loves them, man. And that's why we're here, because we love them. What's up, guys? Welcome. Come with me. We've got something for you. This is where we made the record. Davenport, I tend to do some singing. But those dreams still remain We met working in a day job. We knew we wanted to do something together. We weren't quite sure what was going to happen. So we just like decided to try and, and make a song or two and see how it would turn out. Soul was kind of a common denominator for the three of us. Monk also. We have a honeycut filter, you know, and we, we put all our stuff in there and then it eventually goes through that filter. Everybody kind of doing his own homework and, and then uh, all reconvening and, and making it uh, become a song.
I happened to be lucky enough to play keyboards with Black Alicious. Then eventually some of our songs caught the ear of uh, Chief Excel. He championed our stuff to uh, the rest of the people at Quantum and they decided uh, they wanted to release our album. My name is Chief Excel. I'm one half of Black Alicious, one seventh of a crew called Quantum. It's a great, great small little label. It's like the little, little engine that could out of San Francisco. That's really what turned us into a band. The fact that, you know, our friend Chief XL was down, basically. You know, I was just really intrigued by the sound, you know. I really liked the sort of juxtaposition of styles that they had. It was something completely new, very different, uh, extremely innovative, but at the same time just had that underlying quality, which is what is important to us. A lot of people seem to enjoy it from the get-go, even if they don't really understand what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I don't think I understood what we were doing. Future funk. Oh, okay, that's what we do. We invented future funk. We're getting comparisons to things that we didn't even ever imagine, you know. George Michael. George Michael, that's totally the first one on the list. Man, this is so freaking dope. It's exactly what I want, like part Beck, part DJ Shadow, part Radiohead, and then part Beatles. The lead singer definitely reminds me of Mick Jagger. His voice is kind of liquid. Ow, 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 ow. His guard is down. He's just having a good time. Honey drop. Herve is like a nine-year-old boy on crack. The energy, the dance moves. The dance moves I've ever seen. He's dancing so much, you don't know how he's hitting the notes. He doesn't even know it. He's a very modest guy. And he'll be like, oh, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. His feet are like this far off the ground. Uh, with Tony being able to play this uh, Akai sampler here, the MPC live, that's a major plus right there. You know, they, they hear drums and they, you know, usually see a guy with sticks hitting some stuff and uh, I'm just doing it a different way. more unusual hip-hop which I'm just calling different hip-hop and what you're about to see right now is Joe Hansen breakdance which sounds as ridiculous as it's going to look hip-hop has four elements and I've already mastered three used to be black but I sold my melon sold some crack get Joe some etc <laughs> one left is break dancing. So I'm going down to the IBE B-Boy Championship Tournament to bust a move. They say you should shake what your mother gave you. But what if your mother didn't give you very much? What do you like about break dancing? Uh, it's uh, self-expression, you know, anything I want to do I can and um, it's got structure, it keeps me busy, keeps me healthy. Is breakdancing mostly strength or style? Uh, it's a combination of both. What if you lack both? If you lack both, you, 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 it's, you try what? it's better to uh, be like that guy and be really intense and um, show your... Uh, Detroit what? Yeah, Detroit. Fighting is taking someone else's stuff, like taking their, not being original. Okay. So don't bite the original. Um, is it, would this be biting? Yes, that would be. <laughs> Did breakdancing originate as a way for gangs to settle rivalries? Is that true? Yeah, I mean, back then, yeah. Instead of fighting, they were dancing. So let's say I'm in a bad part of Chicago, uh -huh. and a gang comes up to me. All I have to do is be like, No way, not Great skies are gonna <laughs> clear up, <laughs> nah, put man. on a happy face. You go do that in Chicago, you're gonna get shot, dude. So you're judging this competition? Yeah. yeah. I really want to do well. <laughs> no way. You know, what I mean? you know what I'm saying? Oh, you're here to support your boyfriend. Are you loyal to your boyfriend? Yeah. You're faithful? Yeah. You would never consider for a moment 
not being faithful? That depends. If I beat, if I went up, if I went up against him in the competition, would you leave him for me if I beat him? If you beat him. But he's good. He's pretty good. <laughs> When you go out and do your routine, can I come with you and like be your shadow, mimic you as you go? That would be biting. It is a good way to think of breakdancing like you're having sex with somebody imaginary? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. It's so I'm like, good at that. Yeah, I mean, I bet. Where'd you get those? Um, these are Bathing Ace, man. They're like $200. But my shoes have air conditioning. You see those holes? <laughs> you can't pay for that. How many points would you give me if I did the peanuts dance, you know? <laughs> How many points? You'd get like a zero. The internet only puts so much out and it's just a lot of people that are beginning or whatnot, they put themselves out there and... I learned everything about breakdancing from Wikipedia. Wikipedia? I can, on, I can not only cipher, but cyber. <laughs> I'm an e-boy. <laughs> You're an e-boy, I like that. Who are you representing? I am representing SC Crew from Tracy, California, 209. I'm representing Boston, Minnesota. Ah, Minnesota, I have a friend. Polk County. Polk County, what? And I haven't danced before. I think one, you did good. Like this is your very first time. A lot of you went out there and you danced on beat. At some points you did, at some points you were attempting to, but it was good, man. You had a concept of dancing. Your energy was there, believe it or not. Do you think one day you'll ever be as good as me? <laughs> I, I hope so, man. So did I get served? Uh, we don't like. To... Well, okay. No. Well, you didn't really battle anybody, mm -hmm. so you didn't get served. First I didn't day. get. I still want to get served. So can we do a dance off? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Who's Bino White? Who's Bino White? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. That's like asking, who is Jesus? You know, he's not actually as bad as I thought he was going to be. He's still pretty terrible, but... Not as bad as I thought. Now, uh, when we come back, you're going to see another unlikely person in another unlikely situation in just a few beats. Like this. <laughs> We're back. Um, so, now you guys know Vanguard's Adam Yamaguchi, right? Now, right now, what you're about to see is him trying to do some hip-hop dance moves. And it looks ridiculous. He does this one dance move that's like, like some kind of like, I don't know what, just watch. You're going to see. watching these women and some of them are actually pretty good. I'm a little nervous. I'm carefully studying their choreography. I want to get this right. The youngest member uh, here, I believe it's 52 years old. It's like a new, new middle class, a new China. I'm seriously nervous that they're going to be bullying me. She's 70 years old and she's going to teach me how to dance. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm 
coordinating my huh huh with my huh. So how did you get your start dancing? I was in 2003, I So my sad attempt at my sad attempt at break dancing resulted in me, I think, pulling something. Can we please get Adam to come down here and do that little, what was this? So if you want to see more of the Yom Goochter, uh, go to iTunes and subscribe to Vanguard's podcast. When we come back, be boys in impressive landscapes. What's the first thing that pops into your head? Hockey? The Grizzlies? Freezing cold weather? Well, let me tell you that now, there's some b-boys and b-girls there, if you didn't know. BC Square producer Will Lemke is going to show us how some local b-boys and b-girls are redefining their city's reputation. So check it out. When you see a b-boy jam, you see the inside of an event. You see a building that you can get anywhere. You know what I mean? That's not Vancouver. That's the Vancouver b-boys, but that's not Vancouver. People don't know where you come from. And by doing this, they're gonna see like, damn, that, that, that ain't like our city. That's crazy. Look, look at that, they got water. I haven't seen water in like a year. <laughs> I think when you grow up here, you tend to, you start to forget how beautiful it is here. It's beautiful and ugly at the same time. It's like you have these mountains and you have these trees and this beautiful wilderness around. And, but you also have this very aggressive urban decay that's also in the city. So they kind of interblend in some ways. Vancouver's b-boying scene in comparison to the international scene is um, kind of small, but we're on the up and up. We're coming up strong, you know? We got a lot of good talent in Van City, and we're putting ourselves on the map, for sure. I find it very calm, very relaxed. I think people are more laid back here. I mean, uh, the scenery is a little different than any other city, but it's kind of unique in its own way. We got a lot of hills and a lot of <laughs> I'm Blink, aka Michael Blinsky. That's the real name. Uh, filthy feet, straight b-boy. Vancouver is a condensed city with a lot of residential area in the downtown core. You don't need to leave. You live downtown, you breathe downtown, you work downtown, you eat downtown. I don't leave a eight block radius if I don't need to. A lot of people are really relaxed out here because even though we do have a condensed populated core that leaves spread open wilderness and just a lot of places just go relax.
what's up? My name is Basco5 and I want to welcome you to my art studio, which is located in downtown Vancouver. I'm a b-boy and an artist. I've been a b-boy about seven years or so and I've been an artist pretty much my whole life. I didn't really think about it that much before, but it would actually be pretty interesting to take b-boy and instead of just, you know, keeping it in the rec centers, it's going out and seeing all these beautiful sights and sounds of Vancouver and letting these places influence you. Like how would my breakdancing be different if I went to a spruce forest or if I went into a back alley or if I went up onto a mountain. I'm Miss Finesse and I live the B-Girl life in Van City. I started with an uh, all-female B-girl crew called the Fly Antics. We started out with five B-girls. We then morphed into kind of a multidisciplinary crew involving an MC as well. And uh, now pretty much I'm doing my own thing. People have kind of spread out, um, but I'm still doing or helping spread the word of B-girlism and B-boyism by doing a show called Break Life on Pass the Mic. My style, I'm um, pretty much a footwork head. I love footwork, um, I love dancing. You know, I rock with finesse. Tell me what happened with your finger. Uh, close it on the door. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot put any pressure on it. The smallest thing, like a finger, it will do you in. I mean, I can go for an injury in the, the arm, I can get like a bump and bruise on my head or whatever, I'll still dance. Vancouver, man, it's, uh, I've been in the scene for about, I'd say 10 years, 12 years now. I've seen a change, seen the old school heads, uh, you know, the styles, the, the inspirations that have come over the years that have come in waves. The influence and and mentalities and and everything is kind of like a melting pot. Because it's a port town, we're pretty much the city of Canada on the west coast. It's an interesting place to grow up, an interesting place to be, boy. Me in the next three years, travel. I've been so blessed uh, with the environment I'm in. I want to see other places. The world is so big. There's so many things to see. Why not see it through B-Boy? You know, that kind of reminds me of some of the hip-hop spots I go to. There's b-boys getting down, and I'm surrounded by trees, but I'm not outside. When we come back, a group for some Palestinian hip-hop, courtesy of VT Square producer Tia Thompson. And these guys, they rap in Arabic, English, and Hebrew. So let's do this, Buddhist. a predominantly Arab city to see dance. They rap about what life is like as a Palestinian, unrecognized in Israel, and without a place of their own to call home. They, they think about the, about the stuff that they should be, should be said aloud. He's good, yeah. What do they usually rap about? The situation of the minority of Arabs here. It's a real situation. Sue and I dated for about a year when I first moved to Israel. He, his brother, and Joker had just started rapping together. I met in general, where are we? One of the neighborhoods in Lid, which is the, the majority, well, 100% of the Arabs here. In this neighborhood, there is a separate wall too, not the big separate wall between the big old Palestine and Israel, yeah, but yeah, the yeah. separate wall between uh, 
Jewish rich neighborhood and uh, ghetto. Show us your bedroom. No, it's all mess here. This is the evolution of them. The first, second, that's the fake stuff. It's all been stored without us knowing. Free the pee, free Palestine, free the pee. This is a CDI thing in. I don't know if my name's on it because it's in Arabic. Is my name on this anywhere? Yeah. Where? Not in here, inside. Oh. What is the song that I'm in about? Freedom for my sister. What's going on with the female, the rights of the female. So, what made you start rapping? I used to study cinema and I liked filming and I, back then I bought camera. And I went to film Tamer in the studio and then Tamer offered me to do the Kora. So I said, okay, I'll do the Kora for my brother. I got in and I just loved the vibe, like the whole microphone, you know, everything. Together, like day by day and step by step, we, we built something that uh, now it's standing for the name of them. Which means, what does Darren sound like? Eternity, for? immortal. We found the meaning in Hebrew and in Arabic, which in Hebrew is blood and in Arabic it's eternal. So it's eternal blood. Gharif uh, Iblaj is stranger in my own country. It's about uh, how the whole world is treating us as Israelis, while Israel is treating us as Palestinians. I'm talking about the Palestinians inside of Israel. How we know where we belong, but nobody wants to accept us at the same time. We are non-Jews in a Jewish state. Love story. This song's for Arabs. Mm. So, it's yeah, for Arabs. No, because I, I understand... It's problems uh, with our society. Because this is coming from me, who understands personally what it was to be with an Arab and living here. So, like, it's, it's familiar. Being with somebody that in certain areas you can't show your affection for or whatever like that. I hear you have a huge following, like, all over the place now. But still, we are not um, on the conscious of people every day, and because we don't have easy, we don't have TVs to put our video clips in, we don't have radios to play our songs with. As you see, we do it all underground, more or less. Why we don't have all that? Because we don't have a country. When you don't have a country, you don't have a channel. Israelis don't push our music because for them we are Palestinians. That's it. Racist reasons. And the Arab world is not, it's not really pushing us, why? Because we are really, because we are Israelis for them. Everybody want to grow up, feeling that he's belonging. You know, I'm not trying to be all patriotic and anthem. And at least I don't want to wake up feeling that I don't belong. Now in the borders of Gaza, three soldiers are beating the shit of, uh, of some Palestinian guy. You cannot give him the music and tell him go feel better. It's, it's bullshit. I'm working on a solo Hebrew album now. Oh, really? When I think politics, I think there's a lot of things that Jewish people need to know, that Israelis need to know. Yes, they should study my language. Language, they should know my language like I know theirs. But they don't now, and I just feel like saying something. <laughs> Probably wondering what's the problem. The show's over, man. Yeah, I know. It makes me sad all the time. But you can feel like you're still connected to me by writing to feedback at current.com and tell us, hey, Dominique, I thought this and that about the show. I'm Dominique Purdy, and until next time, I must say, hand puppets are evil. Don't trust them. They'll steal your hands away. Keep watching Current.